but uh, they couldn't get Hart Hartman. He gets the corner. He's out to the 40. Good straight drop. It rushed heavily and hit as he throws. Herman back makes the catch, wins it, touchdown. Vinsler drops back and lofts a pass over the center. Caught for a touchdown. Goes, but he's got Gatlin open. He makes a great leaping grab. We're at Taylor Field on the campus of Lakeland College where today the Muskies will play what is arguably the most important game in the history of the football program. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is uh, Director of Communications and Sports Information Director, Dave Gallianetti. Dave, uh, Lakeland has never been in the NCAA Division III playoffs before they have a chance today. Yeah, they sure do, Mike. Um, this college has had football since 1934. In 71 years, football team's never gotten a playoff berth before. A uh, number of years they were in NAIA, to, you know, 1997 they switched to NCAA. It's going to be a, a, a tall order though against Aurora University today. Lakeland comes in 5-0 and in the conference, 6-2 and overall. Aurora comes in 4-1 and in conference. It's a game for first place in the conference. Yeah, if you look statistically, these two teams are ranked first in, in one of the two of them is ranked first in almost every category statistically in the league. So uh, the, the the line of order for Lakeland is pretty simple. If they win the game today, they clinch the league's automatic playoff berth. Uh, if, if they lose the game, we're looking at probably a three-way tie at the end of the year. Uh, there's a very complicated tiebreaker that we'll explain later, but really for the Muskies, it's simple. Win and you're in the playoffs. Well, they have some outstanding offensive players, and you know, just before we went on, we were talking about the defensive side, but uh, Ryan Myuri had a great game last week, and uh, actually Lakeland had 541 yards rushing, second most in the NCAA Division III this year, so offensively they're not challenged. Now, Ryan is a, a quarterback, is such a threat to do almost anything on the field. Uh, the, the, the challenge that he poses for, for the defensive side is uh, they have so many different sets, and you don't know whether he's going to run out of it or throw out of it. So even if you put a spy on him, you're just not exactly sure what he's going to do. And, and he's incredibly talented. He's uh, quite an athlete, and, and it confuses opposing defenses. Let's talk a little bit about the defensive side because Lakeland is very tough on defense also. Over the last couple of weeks, the defense has played extremely well. Um, Ryan Vandaloo from Sheboygan Falls is uh, nationally ranked in sacks uh, and uh, tackles for loss per game, and Den David Benton is ranked nationally in sacks per game. We're going to step out, and when we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff and the starting lineup for today's game. We're back at Lakeland College where they're uh, doing the coin flip. And uh, let's step out, let's uh, do some of the uh, starters for today's game. For Lakeland on offense, they'll be starting Ryan Myuri at quarterback, Travis Jervis at fullback, Brandon Erdman at uh, halfback. Erdman is number 46, and Jervis is 34, Myuri is number eight. Matt Martin, number 17, and MacArthur White, number one, are the wide receivers. Martin is number 17. John Gilmore, number 81, had uh, two touchdown passes last week, will be the tight end. Ryan Holmes, 77, and Byron Vandalin, number 69, are the tackles. Joseph Poole, Brian Eder are the guards. Eder is 78, Poole 59, and Andrew Argall, 11. number 54, is the center. Senior day today, Dave, and you had a chance to uh, introduce those seniors for uh, Lakeland College. Yeah, those kids have worked uh, extremely hard over the last several years. Uh, they saw a coaching change three years ago uh, when Jim Zabrowski came in. Have done a great job of really changing the attitude of this program, and these seniors were the ones that bought into it from day one. And uh, it's got the program on the footsteps of going to a playoff game. On the return for uh, Lakeland was uh, number 22, Nick Hunter. <laughs> Hunter was hit immediately, got it outside the 10 yard line, but that's about all. Make it at about the 14. 
First and 10 Lakeland. And we're just underway. Alongside us is uh, Dennis Semp. Played a little football out here. He's uh, running the clock. First back or up the middle is Jervis. Picks up a pretty good chunky yardage. Muskies offensively uh, all year long have been tough. They've got the number one scoring offense in the league at 36.4 points a game, and they've got the number one total offense in the league at 439.1 yards a game. So they're a load to deal with. That was uh, Brandon Erdman on the carry. The up back in this set is Travis Jervis, 34. Erdman the deep back. Myeri under center. Halfback quarterback option. Myeri keeps it, and he's got a first down. He's out over the 30 at about the 34-yard line. Defensively, Aurora has the number one scoring defense in the league. They're only allowing 17.1 points a game. So when you got the number one scoring offense and number one scoring defense, Mike, something's got to give. Exactly. Well, good play. They mark it at the 32-yard line, or 33. So pick up a 13 yards for uh, Ryan. Three wide receivers, two off to the right. And off to Erdman, I believe that was. Not much going there. Brandon Erdman's really stepped in, had a great year, wasn't the starter at the beginning of the year, but you know, for a freshman. Actually, that was Sean Lee. But it was the, Sean. Well, Sean's really stepped up too. Again, was not a starter at the beginning. They had of a the lot year. of different ball carriers last week. Of course, it was a blowout, but. Yeah. Uh, well, Erdman and Lee, uh, the last several weeks have really been the two mainstays, and, and they've both done a great job. This running attack uh, with Mayeri at quarterback and those two backs is something to deal with. Mayuri out of the shotgun this time, rolling, rolling, finds a receiver wide open over the middle. He's hit and dropped. Making the grab was Eric Royal. But uh, buying time with the rollout really paid dividends that time. You know, the, the real key offensively, too, has been this offensive line. It's a, it's a senior-laden line. It's an experienced group of kids. They give Mayuri time to throw when he needs it. They open up holes for these running backs. Uh, it, it's a really good group. Uh, Vandlin, Brian Vandlin from Monroe was an all-region pick last year and kind of heads up that group. They've done a good job. First down for Lakeland. Hand off to Lee right up the middle. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time. That last play from uh, Myeri to Royal went for 11 yards. And it was out to the 47, the 48. Got a local boy, too, on that offensive line, Brian Ader, senior from Random Lake. Uh, got a couple local kids on the team. We'll be talking about Ryan Vandaloo on the defensive side from Sheboygan Falls. Um, this program has always had a lot of luck recruiting talented kids from the area who've come here and done extremely well. Got a couple of kids. Oh, my eerie trips and falls. He's got his feet tangled, and the uh, ball's going to be spotted way back. At about the 42. He looked like he just lost his footing in the grass there a little bit and maybe hit the top of a shoe. And Ryan was uh, offensive player of the year in the league, offensive back of the year in the league last year, and will be one of the players that will be a front runner for player of the year in the conference this year. You mentioned about getting local talent out here. Uh, the basketball team will have a couple of local guys that yep. uh, our fans will be extremely familiar with. Shane Gruby and Peter Worth from North. I just talked to Shane this morning actually and things are going well. They're, they're happy to be here and, and I know Lake Well, McCarthy. McCarthy's got room but he decides to pitch it out and he makes a nice pass and a great catch by MacArthur White. Hit as he as the ball arrived and he hung on. Yeah, the coaching staff That's really, a first down. Coaching staff really feels like MacArthur uh, can be a, a go-to receiver, a big play receiver and he showed some of those skills right there. Ryan got the time again, rolled out a little bit found MacArthur with the pass down the middle. First down, Muskies. 22-yard pickup. First and 10, Lakeland on the 39-yard line. They're on the move, Aurora having trouble. Sean Lee right up the middle, picks up a few. And we got a Lakeland player down. Hobbling up is a big number 78, Brian Etter. Looks like he's gonna be okay. It's second down, pickup of a couple of yards for Lee. 
Muskies have had decent luck scoring in the first quarter. They're outscoring their opponents 65 to 31 in the first quarter this year. And getting on the board first today, I think, will be important. It's always uh, easier to play from ahead. Little flip pass up to Royal. He cuts it back. He slipped by one defender. He's heading to the end zone at the five. Touchdown. No, they're going to rule him out of bounds inside the five. Well, I thought he was going to get in. Boy, now they've ruled it a touchdown. Now they have. Well, that official was standing yeah, right on the yeah, sideline. Right. He didn't do he anything. He didn't do anything, yeah. He didn't help us out at all. Well, you know, they said MacArthur White was a big play receiver, and there he was. Uh, uh, Here we're going to see it, Dave. A little flip pass. A little flip pass to MacArthur White, and boy. This cutback right defense here. Defense was a little confused. He cut back, and he was gone. MacArthur's got great speed. Oh, yeah, the, the official right behind the guy standing yeah. on the line. Signal touchdown. That one, 34 yards or so. Kick is no good. And I'll tell you one thing that uh, down the road could hurt Lakeland uh, is their kicking game because every time it's been an adventure. That was a nine play drive, 86 yards total. And four. On the football field, you've got to stay focused and not get distracted. The same is true on the road. So before your wireless phone becomes a distraction, Take a timeout for safety. In bad weather or traffic, call later. Dial sensibly and use a hands-free device. You know, your wireless phone can be your best safety tool. To call for help, stop a crime, however you use it, remember, with wireless, safety is your call. Time uh, at the kicking game, and uh, you know it's just one of those things where when you're kind of starting from scratch and you don't have one, getting one is going to take time. Well, one thing that a lot of the high schools have gone to, Dave, is uh, picking up a soccer player to do the kicking. And uh, that seems to have uh, paid dividends for a lot of the high school programs. Problem here is uh, on Saturday, soccer and football will play same days. Uh, so you're going to have to have a kid who's going to walk away from soccer and become part of the football team. And on the college level, it's a little more difficult because you're getting recruited for soccer. You're probably going to play soccer. Yeah, exactly. You can't just quit. Doing the kicking was uh, Billy Hughes. Short kick taken at the 20. And Ooh, hit and dropped one. was uh, Danny McKinson. McKinnison. Taken at the 20, got it out over the 30, about the 33 yard line. So it'll be first and 10, Lake uh, Aurora. Lakeland on defense, number one total defense in the league. They allow 250 yards on average per game. Big weapon for Aurora is their quarterback. Um, Horning, number Andrew Horning, number yep. 12. And Horning is under center. Give it to the first back through. On the carry was number 36. Spartans will go to Pardon the air. Man, that was number 26, Nick Paxson. Spartans will go to the air quite a bit. Uh, Horning on the year, 99 of 160. He's completed 61% of his passes and has 1,344 yards on the air. He's averaging 192 yards a game in the air. So the Spartans are not afraid, obviously, to throw the ball. Second down and three, ball spotted right on the 40. Give it to the halfback that time. The stop is made by uh, Nick Hunter. Nick, one of those seniors. Last year, Nick was a running back, and this year, uh, because of some changes on the defense, they decided to switch him to linebacker. Uh, Nick's got really great speed, and uh, they felt with that speed, uh, they taught him some tackle techniques, and he's turned into uh, a, a good linebacker in what is a really solid linebacking crew for this team. All right, Horning ducks under center. It's third down and one, a short one. Lakeland coming in tough to make the stop into the backfield. Good tackle made by number 40 for Lakeland, John Wagner. John's a freshman, uh, has had a really Vandaloo outstanding also in on that stop. Had a really outstanding year. Vandaloo uh, is uh, number seven in the country in tackles for loss, uh, average per game. and. Uh, Ryan from Sheboygan Falls, so that's that local factor kicking in. Vandaloo was on the bottom of the pile, Wagner on top. 
on the punt return for Lakeland was uh, Mike Christian. Christian uh, stepped in last week. Uh, Bile had a real tough time catching the ball, Dave, and uh, they switched to Christian. He stays with it again this week. Mike got his first uh, touchdown catch uh, of his career, according to his parents, earlier this year, he was going back to high school. And uh, Mike, another one of those seniors, uh, has been uh, an impact player for the team this year, too. And first and 10, Lakeland, they have uh, two wide receivers off to the right. Myeri straight back, looking over the middle. He's got a receiver who makes a catch. Out over the 45-yard line, I believe that was uh, Cole Roller. That was 88. 88. Martin, Martin. Ringeson. First and 10, Lakeland gets it way up here to the 47-yard line. That was a 21-yard pickup. You know, the way they had their formation, Dave, they uh, really opened up the middle, and that's where they sent that receiver. Yeah, ring guys and only with five catches on the air for 40 yards. Sean Lee on the carry. Sean Lee on the carry for the Muskies. Pretty nice carry, pretty nice pickup that time. It'll be second down. Picks up about three. They're giving him a four-yard pickup, so we will too. Fairly important drive for Aurora. Obviously, it's early, but to have the home team go up and the first place team in the league go up 14 to nothing at their place. Oh, that's huge. Uh, that, that would be pretty, a pretty big deficit to have to work from. And a whistle on the field. Ball start. Ball start number one. Yes, five mile away. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense number one. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, that flag on Lakeland will make it uh, second down and 11. Aurora went to the playoffs last season. There was a three-way tie for the conference title, Lakeland, Concordia, and Aurora. We'll explain that tiebreaker in a minute. Very tight formation, Royal in motion. Myeri going deep. Royal trying to go over the receiver but knocking the ball away was uh, Robbie Perry, and then we get a flag on the play. A lot of contact uh, going down <laughs> the line, a lot of contact when they went up in the air. I was so. gonna say it could go against either player. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It looks like they're gonna call it on Aurora. Team White, 15 from the previous spot. Pass interference on the defense. That's we'll Spartan. take it. Now college, that's a I think it's a, a straight penalty. 15 yard. Yeah, it's it? a straight 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Of course, in the NFL, you would get the ball at the spot of at the, the spot of the foul. In college, much like high school, it's a 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First and 10, Lakeland ball spotted just inside the 40. We'll call it the 39. Myeri's still at quarterback where he's been all year. First back through is number 35, Paul Resup. Paul's a sophomore from Appleton, fullback. Picks up five yards on the play. Got a lot of guys involved in the running game today already, Mike. Yeah. First and ten, or second down and about five. Royal in motion. Second back through is Lee. Stays on his feet. Pounds forward inside the 30. Near the 25, it's going to be another first down for the Muskies. That's what I think Sean's done such a great job all year of is he gets hit and he stays on his feet and he keeps moving forward. Uh, you know, sometimes backs when they get hit that first time don't necessarily go down, but you just got to keep moving because you never know what's going to happen. Force the defense to bring you down. Lakeland on the move. They're on top, six to nothing. We're at. Uh, 6.33 and counting in the first quarter. 
White in motion this time. And now we get a whistle again and a timeout, Lakeland College. Yeah, my area was back in the shotgun in that formation. And uh, obviously somebody saw something they didn't like. Well, with 6.26 remaining in the first quarter, Lakeland's up six to nothing. We'll be right back. Dave, I mentioned uh, just before we went on the air that this is not only an important game for uh, Lakeland College, it's an important game for TV8. Coming into today's game, we've had uh, 10 broadcasts and the TV8 so far is five and five. This game puts us over the top if <laughs> Lakeland can win it. Well, I think the Muskies are gonna try to do their part would be my guess. Dennis Semp said the play clock was down to one second and that's why Lakeland called the timeout to avoid the uh, Delay a game penalty, so it's uh, first down at 10. Bouncing to the outside was uh, Sean Lee, and he picks up a couple of hard-earned yards before he's wrestled to the ground. Second down and about eight. Sean's from Michigan City, Indiana, Michigan City High School, sophomore. Only a sophomore, so he's got a Couple more years left. Yeah, with uh, Sean Lee at sophomore and Brandon Erdman uh, running back at freshman. Myuri drops back and now he keeps it. No, oh, just ready to make a cut. And again, his feet went out from underneath him. I think that uh, the field might be a little soft out in the middle. And uh, I don't know if there's, uh, you get, uh, get your foot in there, get your cleats in there, and it could be a little slippery out there. I think we're seeing a little bit of that already. Now, Sean Lee, a sophomore. Paul Resop, a sophomore. Brandon Erdman, freshman running back. So there's an awful lot of talent going to be returning next year in the backfield for the Muskies. Flanked out to the uh, left side is Royal and White. Hand off to Lee. He's got a little bit of a crease, and we get a flag. I think we're going to get a holding call on Lakeland's uh, Byron Vandalin, we'll have to see. The preliminary signal was a holding call on Lakeland. Point of attack, hold, and a takedown. So we'll go. Should have got the name of that head official. Waiting for a call. Holding number 69 of the offense, the 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat third down. Well, that's gonna be a costly one, Dave. That'll make it uh, third and long. Yeah, headed in the wrong direction for sure. Um, Back outside the 30 yard line. Is it second or uh, no, it is third down? Third down and about 17 yards yeah. or so, or 18. Ball's at back on the shotgun. Yeah, ball's at the 33. Short pass over the middle. Hunter picks up pretty good yardage, but I think he he's going to be close to the first down, but I think he's going to be a tad short. We'll have to see. There you uh, see the back the slip down. out of the backfield. Yep. Sean Lee got out in the middle there. Made up the rest after the catch. Yep, and it is a first down for Lakeland. Ball spotted on about the uh, 15, 16 yard line. I think it's just outside the uh, 15 yard line. Lee up the middle, he's got some room and dragging a tackler down. 
inside the five near the goal line. Lee really causing problems for Aurora right now. Boy, seems like at least early on here, the only people stopping the Muskies are themselves on a couple penalties other than that. A yeah, good blocking up front and then a good hard run. Ball is spotted inside the five at the four. Sean Lee, the deep back, you give it to him again, right up the middle. You know, on this drive, and even in the first drive, Dave, they've just been overpowering the Aurora defenders inside. Well, I'll tell you, that line, uh, the Lakeland offensive line, those are big kids. Take a peek here. A good shot by Brian Andrews right down the goal line. Vanlin, 6'3", 3 Quarterback sneak. No signal yet. Lakeland's calling touchdown. <laughs> now the oh, officials it signal it. <laughs> Ryan Myeri scoring that one on a quarterback sneak. Good push again up front by the line. Two possessions, two scores for the Muskies, and uh, obviously things are off to just about as good of a start for Lakeland as they could have hoped for in a, in a big game against a really good opponent. Well, let's see how they do on this extra point. Snap and the set are good. The kick is good also. With 3.35 remaining in the first quarter, Lakeland on top, 13 to nothing. It starts in your own neighborhood. When you care enough to give your time to help someone still learning the way and getting involved in the needs of your community. Once you've helped bring a smile to someone's face and help brighten their day, you'll be hooked for life. The Major League Baseball Players Trust and Volunteers of America are teaming up to make a real difference in the lives of the people in our communities. Join a winning team. See what you can do to help. Sean Lee has done a lot of the work. Nine Sean carries, nine. 39 yards. Yep. Mayeri with four carries for 18 so far. Billy Hughes is going to kick it off. Back deep is uh, Troy Blazer, number one. Mayeri a perfect five for five passing with 108 yards. So the Muskies are really mixing it up. Taking is Danny McKinnison. And he gets it out over the 25 near the 30 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Aurora from that spot. The, the biggest statistic, you know, quite simply, just look at the teams. Lakeland with 162 total yards. And Aurora with. Not much. <laughs> uh, 10. <laughs> well, Lakeland has dominated time of possession so far too. Right. That pass by uh, Horning is over the head of uh, Joel Folliard. Put a little too much on it. Big he was drive open. for uh, big drive for Aurora here, Mike. Um, yeah, you'd think they really they, need to get on the board. Let's well, even game. if they don't get the points, just show that they can move the ball. Right. right. Lakeland has just dominated so far in the first quarter. Rora comes out with uh, two wide receivers out here to the right, to the left. You get a wing back on the left side. And off to the running back who slips by one tackler, slips by another. He's through the line of scrimmage and he's finally wrestled down inside of Lakeland territory. Travis Peril on the carry. He's our leading rusher on the air. 83 attempts for 445 yards on the season, three rushing touchdowns. Picks up a good block from uh, his uh, teammate Aaron Harmon, number 80. And it's gonna be uh, first and 10 Aurora at the 47. Yeah. 
That pass is incomplete. Just a touch high. Look like the same pattern they yeah. ran to this side. Intended receiver was uh, Joe Folliard. A little more catchable than that past couple plays ago, but so far the Aurora passing game is not clicking. That's a good thing. That run by Peril was a 24 yarder. Second down, Lakeland blitzing on this play. That time Morning has his receiver on a little cut over the middle, Troy Blazer making the catch. Didn't fool the Lakeland defense too much. A lot of times you can get some big yardage off of that play. If Pickup of about five yards makes it third down and five. Thanks, Andy. Like you said, Mike, uh, important try for Aurora and just to move the ball, and they're starting to move the ball a little bit. Got a reverse in the backfield. Oh, he doesn't have much room. He's going to get hit in the backfield and thrown down. Yeah, didn't throw, uh, did not fool anybody on the Lakeland defense on that one. That's going to be a loss of five yards on the play. Try to reverse in the backfield. Seventeen, Travis Peril to Joe Folliard. And Nothing doing. Nope, <laughs> a swarm of muskies. Look like that one went off the side of his foot a little bit. Yeah, look, he really didn't boot it very hard. Eric Guthrie doing the punting for Aurora. Not a good kick. Didn't even get it inside the 20 yard line. Ball's gonna be spotted at the 24. First and 10 Lakeland. Well, last time they took possession, Dave, they got it at the 26 and marched at 74 yards for a score. Let's see if they can march at 76 this time. Mayuri faked the dive and kept it and pulled it out. Picks up a couple of yards. We talked a little bit about uh, that tiebreaker situation. Last year, Aurora, Concordia, Lakeland all shared the conference title. Aurora beat Concordia. Concordia beat Lakeland. And um, so they, they it's all- It's a point thing, right? They I all mean, beat point each, scored. They all beat each other. That's where the losses came in. And that's what could happen today if Concordia wins and Aurora would win. Myuri looks like it's gonna be intentional grounding, but uh, referees don't call it. Essentially what happens is they take a look in that situation. Oh, and there's a flag. Late. Wow. <laughs> well, there was no receiver in the area. And that's what led me to believe it might have been an intentional grounding situation. And the quarterback. Sure enough. Boy. Okay, what you're going to take it. Down. Pat, on the spot. Yes. You have it? All right. Quarterback. It's a spot foul. Loss of down. Brings up third down. A game to play for everybody after this weekend. Conference game? One more conference game. And if Aurora would win today, and then everybody wins next week, there'd be a three way tie between Concordia, Aurora, and Lakeland. Lakeland sure. would get the playoff berth, which is an automatic berth for the conference champion. That's how. Uh, that, that, that's where the playoff berth comes into play is the league champ gets an automatic spot in the playoffs. All right, we have a third down and 11. Not only a loss of yardage on the penalty marched off, but also a loss of down. Myuri straight back looking, now he steps up. 
Fires the pass to uh, Erdman, but uh, a little bit too high for Brandon. It goes incomplete. That'll make it fourth down. My guess is when Brandon saw Ryan running, he thought he was just going to take it. And Ryan made a last second decision to dump it off. And tough situation. You lose that down, boy, and suddenly things change in a hurry. Oh, for sure. Lakeland will punt for the first time today. Billy Hughes, the freshman punter from Florida. Good snap, good kick taken at about the 48 by Blazer. And then he's wrestled down in Lakeland territory at about the 46. Big Nick Zek on the tackle. Used up his final year of eligibility in basketball last winter. Redshirted as a freshman. So he had a nice more. little uh, article on him in yep. today's paper. Yep. Uh, the press has been, every week they run a profile about uh, Lakeland athletes, and Nick was in today. Had a really tremendous athletic career here between football He's and a basketball. Load. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. He could just dominate on a basketball court, yeah. you know, with his size yeah. and strength. Now 6'5", 270. Peril right up the middle, and that'll probably be the final play of the quarter. Aside from being such a big guy, he's got really good quickness, really good feet, anticipates well, which uh, makes him a great basketball player and a great defensive lineman. Ball is inside the 45. One breakthrough machine gave us that is the end of the quarter. As we start second quarter action, it'll be uh, Lakeland 13, Aurora nothing. Wisconsin, life's so good. Call 1-800-432-TRIP or visit TravelWisconsin.com. Those kids weren't camera shy, were they? No, no. <laughs> we'll be careful, they'll be taking our job. That might be a good thing though. Yeah, could be. <laughs> All right, we got second down for Aurora, second and seven. Perro got uh, three yards in that first carry. Right up the middle, not much going there. That was number 36 for Concordia, Chris McAndrew. Going to make a third down and uh, five or so. Ball spotted just outside the 40 yard line. We'll call it the 41. Rora has uh, three wide receivers on this set, two off to the right. Horning at quarterback. Inside handoff and uh, Lakeland not fooled at all. They hit that running back in the backfield. Yeah, it's a tough play to run. You got uh, Lakeland uh, defenders. Vandaloo on the bottom of the pile again. Lakeland defenders had already penetrated the line and get that delayed handoff and boy, that guy didn't stand a chance back there. Aurora forced a punt again. Lakeland's defense really done the job the last several weeks. I always said I thought the best teams are the teams that have the best defense because football is such a it's such a game where if oh boy nice Lakeland bounce on nice that Lakeland one, huh? bounce and the Aurora players couldn't get it down. I think it really started for the Lakeland team, especially that win over Concordia. Lakeland was down 14 to nothing after one quarter. Was that they won it 17 to 14? One correct? 17 to 14. But you know, one of the important things was after that first quarter, the defense settled down. Uh, Concordia runs a lot of misdirection, and uh, really the Muskies uh, just needed a quarter to kind of see what they were doing, react to it. 
They only had uh, 40 yards of total offense in the second half of that game, and I think it's really set a tone uh, for all the games since then. Myuri rolling to his left, makes a good pass out to Royal, who makes a good catch, and then he's hit and dropped immediately. But uh, nice pickup for Lakeland. They tried to go back and run around and get a couple extra yards, and Aurora wasn't going to have anything to do with that. Actually, it's just short of the 30, call it the 29. Pickup of five yards. I thought they got a little more, but uh, when he ran back, he gave up yeah, some yards. Yeah, I think he was, as I said he knew he had a guy on his back. He was going to run around him. And White in motion. Myeri hands it off to Lee. He slips through the line of scrimmage, Ooh. and he just falls down. Why? Looked I, like he was going to go. I think that field's a little soft out there. I think there's... You can see that leg, his right leg looked like it. Let's see the replay here. Yeah, it almost looks a little Look scary. Like his right legs just slipped a little bit. And otherwise, with Sean's speed, he might have been gone. Sean, a big White Sox fan, so he was pretty happy. Thrilled with the World Series outcome. Oh, we got a flag in the backfield. Well, Lee battles down to the uh, 45, or up to the 45, I should say. But the hold will bring it back. <laughs> and the Lakeland fans don't care for the call, Mike. No. <laughs> Neither do we, but we're not quite as boisterous. <laughs> Arm outside with a hold. All right. 59. We'll go back, okay. Pat, this will be from the flag. Holding on the offense number 59, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first. Hey. So the Muskies will once again operate. That's a 10 yard penalty, it'll make it first and 20. Operate out of a penalty situation. After a penalty, first 20 for the Muskies. That just means you get to get a few more stats, that's all. Exactly. Mary out of the shotgun rolls right as his receiver. I think that was uh, White. Royal, it was, number 10. Uh, or it was white, maybe. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was McCarthy it was white. white. They were both over there. They should have a rule about that, Dave. What's that? <laughs> you can't have, like, a guy number 10, number one, on the same <laughs> side of the field. <laughs> Got to split them. Pickup of nine makes it second and 11. Oh, good news for Lakeland, you get a, a holding penalty like that, but it's on first down. You got the yardage to make up, but. Running it up the middle was Lakeland. They didn't get a lot. And I didn't catch. Get who that ball carrier was? either Lee or Jervis. I'm not sure which one. Well, we'll give it to Jervis. He hasn't carried yet. <laughs> Ball spotted right on the 40. It's going to be third down and about nine or eight. Big play for Aurora right here. You're down 13 and nothing. You've got Lakeland in a third and long. You want to be competitive, you got to stop the opposite. Over here. the middle, he's got his receiver. White makes a good move. He's going to go all the way at the five. Touchdown, Lakeland. We just made a great move after catching the ball. Number 38, Austin Deer was back there for Aurora. Thought he was going to go one way. MacArthur juked him a little bit, went the other way. Deer fell down, and all that was in front of MacArthur was real estate. 60 yard touchdown pass. Boy, what a, what a lift for Lakeland. You're in a third and long situation. You hit that big pass play. MacArthur got behind the defense, had one guy to beat. That was nice. Threw it right over the defenders. And then. Captain, Dina, watch it.
you're gonna have the option of taking this. Fifteen on sporting, number eighty-two of blue. The fifteen-yard penalty administered on the kickoff. Chesey, his kick is blocked. Well, a punt is, the uh, extra point is no good, so it stays 19 to nothing, and uh, as much as I like the 19 to nothing lead, David, I don't like this uh, yeah. kicking adventure. 92, Marcus Godkin, I think, got in there and hit it. Well, the cheerleaders are really going to town. That should be us, Dave. The way, <laughs> yeah, I could maybe do one, maybe. Uh, you know, the way the Lakeland's defense is playing right now, it looks like a fairly safe lead, but yeah, you never know. There's a whole lot of game left, and this is an Aurora team that has scored its share of points. You know, you mentioned you mentioned earlier that uh, Lakeland trailed Concordia 14 and right. nothing. It came up right. with the win, so you, you're exactly right in what you say. The game and it was the road team that had the lead in that game. So if you're Lakeland, you just the thing of it is you're up 19 to nothing. It's a big game. You know, there's a big pot of gold at the end of the game if you win it. Uh, I don't think uh, the Muskies will start celebrating too early, though. This team has been pretty focused all year long. And the one thing that uh, really uh, gives them an edge is the uh, the defense that they play. The defense that they play, and you know this team does have a good running game. Um, they don't have to go through the air. Mairi, uh, you know, arguably at times is their best running back on the field, and they're gonna be able to run some clock, especially in the second half if they've got that big lead, and just control the flow of the game, keep the ball out of Aurora's hands. McKinnonson again on the return, gets it out to about the 35 where he's hit and dropped by uh, Brent Woodruff. So it'll be first and 10 Aurora. You know, I look, I color code these sheets, David, and uh, you look at this, there's very little red in the first quarter. It's almost all blue, which is Lakeland's color. And uh, hopefully that'll continue throughout the second quarter. Yeah. Aurora's feeling a little blue out on the field right now. <laughs> hey, look at that dark blue Lakeland uniform. Vandaloo coming in on the blitz. Well, we got a flag, so we got a Horning racing to the horn. outside. He's got room to roam. He's going to get near the first down before he's chased out of bounds, but uh, David called it. There's a flag back on the 30-yard line. I think it's going to come back. But we'll let them tell us. You just see Vandaloo edging up to the Linus. We're going back, right, guys? Holding number 65, the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still, first down. You see with the big 60-yard uh, touchdown play. Well, and the, also the other touchdown right. was a touchdown right. pass. White's at four catches for 124 yards and two TDs already. Yeah, most, that's a. That's that a, first one was, yeah, was to White. He had the 33-yarder right. and now the 60-yarder. 60, so big breakout day, at least statistically, for MacArthur and White. Sean Lee, the top rusher, 10 carries for 48 yards. Mayeri with uh, the rushing touchdown. Mayeri, 8 and 9 through the year, 181 total, two TD passes. Andrew Horning at quarterback. Perro's alone setback. Horning rolling to the left. And then being hit and dropped. Good speed showing out there by 
number 97. Now, uh, you're not gonna outrun David Benton, I'll tell you that. Uh, just a tremendous athlete. Uh, about probably five weeks ago, it was a home game. A running back got through the line and was about 30 yards downfield. David, a uh, defensive lineman, senior from Ohio, tracked the kid down and tackled him about 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. Just a tremendous athlete. Great kid, does some mentoring with middle school students in Sheboygan. Uh, and I Horning. think he's looking to stick around here. Horning lost the ball. Lakeland comes up with it. Horning was just running with it, David, and it slipped out of his hands. Yeah. It's like maybe the ball bumped against his knee. I there think, you get a great shot of David Benton. I think Benton recovered it, too. Opportunistic, saw it bobbling right in front of him and picked it up. What a killer turnover for uh, Aurora. Let's watch how, the, how he loses the ball. He's flushed out of the pocket. Whoop. Well, I didn't see anybody get their hands in there. 13 uh, from Lakeland, who is uh, Blaine Hornus, freshman linebacker, was right behind him. But I think he just lost control of the ball. Well, here he back looking deep. He's got Gilmore back there, but also back there was the defender, Jarrell Davidson, and he makes the interception in the end zone, so Aurora will get it right back. Lakeland going for uh, going for jackpot. it jackpot. Jackpot on first play, and Aurora's defense comes up with a big play. Boy, Aurora needed that one, Mike. Exactly. Keeps them a little bit in the hunt. They do trail it with uh, 8.51 remaining until halftime, 19 to nothing. Lakeland has scored on uh, two big passing plays, a 33-yarder and a 60-yarder to MacArthur White. And uh, Myeri had a two-yard quarterback sneak for the third score. All right, first and 10 Aurora ball spotted on the 20-yard line after the interception in the end zone. Horning straight back, fires over the middle. Well, I think he was looking for his tight end, Nate Fincham but uh, Fincham had uh, fallen down and then Horning just had to get rid of it. Defensive line doing a great job of pressuring Horning and he's just not having time, I don't think, to get back there and set up for his passing game. One thing that uh, Lakeland did a lot early in the game last week against Concordia of Illinois was blitz and uh, boy, they just couldn't handle that. Yeah. So far the Aurora offensive line seems to be struggling with Lakeland's defensive line. Talented group, Zach Benton, number 74, Shane Shrimp, who's coming off a season ending injury last year. Farrell oh. gets drilled in the backfield. Stepping up to make the stop was Nick Hunter. And Perro gets uh, nothing, he loses yardage. Then that linebacking crew with Vandaloo, Hunter, Hornus. You just got really good quickness, Wagner. The old guys and the young guys, Hunter and Vandaloo are seniors. It's always Wagner nice to have some of those young guys. But Wagner and, and Hornus are freshmen and they've learned a lot, I think, from Vandaloo and Hunter. Lakeland fans in that shot uh, look pretty happy the way things are going. Steven Johnson, 50, getting some playing time today. He's another freshman. Vandaloo right up the middle gets the sack. Boy, I'll tell you. He got, he got hit pretty good, you know, coming through, but he just slipped right by that blocker and made, it, made the play. Lakeland's chief fence right now just has Aurora going in the opposite direction. And Ryan Vandaloo, watch him come in there. Gets blocked, goes right through the yep. blocker. Muskie's defense dominating right now. Muskie's in general just dominating. Aurora having a really hard time getting on track in an awfully big game for both teams. Look Christian's again, gonna let it bounce. Get away from it. Yeah. And the ball is gonna be spotted at the 38 yard line. First and 10 Lakeland, great field position. Great field position, boy up 19, you punch one in here and uh, Aurora is uh, gonna be in a world of hurt. They're in a world of hurt right now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we like that. First and 10 for the Muskies, they have it on the Aurora 38 yard line. Sean Lee is a deep back. They give it to him. Oh, pardon me, that was Erdman. 
Erdman started the game in the backfield and then uh, he played just a couple of plays and then they got Lee in there for uh, most of the first quarter. And now Erdman is back in there. The other night, Thursday night, Lakeland had a, uh, Coach Zabrowski sponsored a football 101 for women program. Yeah, I saw that in the paper this morning too. Had uh, 17 women sign up for a two and a half hour seminar. That sounded like a good place for a single guy to be. <laughs> <laughs> Erdman gets Another it up player. near the 30. I think the neat thing about it was there were a lot of moms whose sons play high school football and it was an opportunity for them to learn a little bit more about the game. White captain, we'll go back. Seventy-one blue, the hold, ten yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Half. I think it's you know fifth or sixth at least. But uh, Jim and uh, some of his assistants walked through the basics of football, basics of offense, basics of defense. There were a lot of really good questions from the people who were there, and I know they had said they. Ones that I talked to came away really feeling like they knew a lot more about the game. Myuri takes it on a quarterback keeper. He picks up pretty good yardage down inside the 40. That was a called play, like anyway. Now Ryan's got, uh, there's so many different looks and so many different sets and Ryan's got a lot of options out of them. And for opposing defenses, the tricky thing is you're just never sure what he's going to do. Is he going to pass? Is he going to keep it? Is he going to hand off to somebody? Because he's so multidimensional, he can do so many different things to hurt you. Third down and eight. Second back through is Erdman, and he barrels forward inside the 30, close to the first down. That's real close to the first down. He might have got it depending on the spot. Yeah, you have it. You see good blocking up front, hard running by Brandon Erdman, and he's got the first down. 10 yard pickup by uh, Erdman. Erdman, a freshman from Menominee, Michigan, 5'10, 175. Fake to the first back. Well, if it was supposed to be a quarterback option, Erdman uh, got himself out of position. He yeah. got ahead of the quarterback. He should have been hanging back yeah, more. Myer, he just had to keep it, and Aurora did a nice job of recovering and limiting the damage on that one. Pickup of two, two yards by uh, Ryan Myrie. Mayuri was in Saginaw at their program. It's a Division II school, which is where Randy Ory, who used to coach at Lakeland, coaches. Quick swing pass. No, he fakes it. Mayuri does slips by one tackler, runs it right up the gut, and gets a first down. Had some financial aid issues at Saginaw and was thinking about going back home. To Sterling Heights to go to community college, but Randy called back to Lakeland and said, I think I've got a quarterback for you. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Randy Ari, because you certainly did have a quarterback for us. Two year starter now, and, and this year will contend for Conference Player of the Year honors. First and 10 at the 17. Erdman right through the middle. Touchdown, Lakeland. Nice hole by the offensive line, and Erdman just blasted through it. And uh, Well, he got off the ball really quick that time, David. And right now it is just all Lakeland. I don't think they could have scripted this one out any better. <laughs> You're darn right. Wow, we. Very good blocking up front. Really, the line has been, the offensive line has done a great job all half. Now this is a line that really buys into the concept of, you know, they're they're rewarded when when the Muskies get in the end zone. Here's a Here's look at it. Get yeah. a lead blocker. Great, great hole right up the middle. 
Erdman found it and was not coming down. Erdman now three carries for 28 they, yards and a touchdown. They're going for two on that. And I think uh, Erdman is gonna come up just short. So the two point attempt is gonna be no good. Lakeland up to 299 yards of total. Oh, flag oh, comes in real late. There must have been some unsportsmanlike conduct going on as they're unpiling. A little yeah. bit of yapping. Somebody was jawing at somebody. Muskie's up to 299 yards of total offense, Mike, and we've still got four minutes to go in the <laughs> quarter. Wow. Aurora's sitting at 21 yards of total offense. Well, the officials are uh, talking it over, and uh, the head official is doing some writing in his book. That's never a good thing. <laughs> when they write your name down, you're in trouble. Yeah, they had a couple players fight John at each other on that one. Play it over! <laughs> you? Time of possession, Mike. Lakeland's had the ball for 1626. Aurora's only had it for 913, so. Almost a two to one advantage. Almost a two to one advantage there. Well, it's always nice when your team is winning, and I'll tell you, Lakeland, uh, the two times we've been out here, last week and this week, uh, they've just looked outstanding on both sides of the ball. Last week, it went up against a little bit softer opponent, team at the bottom of the league in Concordia of Illinois. They're struggling with numbers right now and with talent. But I'll tell you, this week with Aurora, you know, this is one of the top teams in the conference. So, uh, a team that was in the playoffs last year and did not lose much talent off of that squad. And everything is going Lakeland's way right now. I know it, I was talking to Coach Zabrowski on Thursday night at the Football for Women event, and he said the kids have been really focused this week. They understand what they're playing for. But beyond that, they understand they just got to go out and play football. And if you play the game the way you're taught to play it and you do the things that they've got set up, then the rewards are gonna come at the end. You can't focus on the rewards, you gotta focus on playing well. And this group has bought into that philosophy. You know, it's paying off to the tune of 25 zip right now. <laughs> We're still 4, 421 till halftime. In the way the defense has stepped up, uh, they might stop Aurora again and have a chance to uh, score some more. Blazer uh, trying to get around the corner and pick up some positive yardage, and he does, but uh, he was running like a man that was a little bit afraid of getting hit, and I don't blame him. Tough situation for Aurora right now. I mean, where do you begin? I guess you gotta take it one drive at a time, but uh, the one thing they haven't critical been able for them to get on the scoreboard before they gotta go into the halftime locker room. One thing they haven't been able to do is establish any kind of a running game, and uh, that's put a lot of pressure on uh, Horning then right. when he has to drop back and pass. And well, right now, Lakeland's defensive line, and as a result, their linebackers are really dominating the line of scrimmage, which is causing all kinds of problems. That pass is knocked up in the air and Tip. blocked, and uh, I don't know if you watch Vandaloo, he's teeing off just about every time coming on a blitz. That was tipped by David Benton. Boy, right now I gotta think Horning is just seeing a blue uh, uh, wall of navy blue up there. Benton play any basketball, Dave? Played for a year uh, or maybe two and then just decided to focus on football. And it's, you know, obviously it's really paid off for him. He's a criminal justice major. I think has thought a little bit about going into, um, um, you know, mentoring, counseling. And as mm -hmm. I said, he's done a little bit of that through, um, Horning on a screen pass and again goes incomplete. And uh, Lakeland is uh, just swarming all over the Aurora offense. They aren't giving them anything to do. He's worked a little bit with Larry Samet, who uh, serves with me on the Sheboygan School Board. Larry is a Lakeland alum and um, called me one day looking for some students that could serve as mentors and role models to some troubled middle school students and David was one of the kids that we passed along and I think he's working on his second or third young person right now that he's working with and I know it's working out. He's had him out on campus a few times and it's worked out really well. That's a great program. Pass is complete. 
out to uh, Joel Folliard. Tyrese Warner, defensive back right there on the play. The thing too now, Mike, is it seems like whenever Spartans do make a play, Lakeland defense is right there. That pass went for about seven or eight yards, so it is gonna be fourth down. Kick is just away. Christian was going to come up and pick it off, but uh, he left it bounce, and uh, Rory gets a little bit of a hop, not much. It'll be first and 10 Lakeland at about the 38 with 314 left, and this is uh, exactly what I was hoping for, Dave, that uh, they get the ball back with a chance to score again. You know, and this is probably the worst field. It's the worst field position they've started with in the last several plays, and it's pretty good. And, you know, if you're the Muskies now, boy, you think about punching another one in here before the half. Really salting this one away. You get this thing up over. You get this margin of uh, the, the lead over up over 30, and boy, it's going to be pretty tough. Large group of Muskies right in front of us, the defensive unit being talked to. Chris Creek, defensive coordinator. Uh, has been with Jim for a while now and, and just does a really, really good job. Uh, Chris, if he wants to. Oh, a little play. flea flicker action. He's got a receiver out there. White can't oh, make the no. catch. Coming over to knock the ball away was Jarrell Davidson. Davidson uh, made the interception into the end zone. Yeah, Davidson kind of one of the lone bright spots for Aurora today. Just did a nice job of playing the ball. Anticipated, got a hand up there. Actually, you know, if he throws that a little bit farther. It could lead White right into the end zone. Right, where White doesn't have to come back for it. I don't think uh, Davidson could have got to it. As it is, it's an incomplete pass, and it'll be second down and 10 for Lakeland. David six, Davidson 6'1", 175. White 6'3", so White has a little bit of a size advantage, but Davidson got up in his face on that one, got to handle the ball. And off to Erdman through the middle. He's got an opening. He slips by two tacklers, still on his feet, and is knocked out of bounds near the 30-yard line. What a nice run by Erdman. We're going to have a flag. We've got a flag in the backfield here. I don't know who that's going to be on. Muskies are saying it's on Aurora. And it is. Here you see Erdman slips by one tackler, two tacklers, before he's finally knocked out of bounds. Great run by Erdman right there. Really aggressive, you know, and if you're Lakeland right now, you're feeling really good out there. Every play, getting big yardage, making yard. a little bit more and more difficult for Pat. Aurora to do anything. Okay, Erdman got it to the 31. That'd make it a 31 yard pickup and then tack on the uh, penalty yardage. Aurora's coach is gonna have to whip up a heck of a Illegal hand block time. in the back. Number 73, the defense. 10 yard penalty from the spot. First down, blue. Ball is all the way down to the 20 yard line. So you get the big run and then you get the big penalty yards tacked on at the end of that. And suddenly Lakeland again knocking on the door of the end zone. Actually, we're gonna make that a 32 yard run, Dave. Erdman, the lone setback. Lakeland has uh, wide receivers, two to the right, one to the left. Draw play by Erdman. He's dragged down just inside the 20. Making the stop was Sean Carlson. Nice play by Carlson there. Penetrated through. One of the few times that Aurora's defense today has been able to bring one of Lakeland's runners down near the line of scrimmage. Actually, they're gonna spot that ball right on the 20 again. So give uh, Erdman no gain. Dennis punching in all new numbers and I'm writing over the pin marks <laughs> I made. <laughs> Fake to the first back, Myeri keeps it, gets down inside the 15 yard line. Picks up about six yards or so. Good awareness by Aurora's defense to recognize the fact that the first back through did not take the ball. Third down and about four yards to go for uh, Lakeland. We have 150 and counting to halftime. Lakeland on top, 25 to nothing, trying to punch one more in. 
Big play here for the Aurora defense. Boy, you want to keep Lakeland out of the end zone to have even a chance in the second half. Erdman through. He's got the first down. He's down inside the 10, near the nine. Just some bruising running today by Erdman. It's gonna be first and goal. They're spotting it, I think, on the nine yard line. Just inside the 10. Well, I'll tell you, if they want to pound it up the middle, I think they can get it in. 130 and counting until halftime. Myeri dropping back, flips it out to Jervis. He's knocked out of bounds inside the five. Nice little safe pass. Nice little safe pass to Travis Jervis, a senior. They're going to spot it right at the five, so a four yard pickup. Travis from Ashland, he's a Washburn High School graduate. He was one of those seniors that you announced. He was. Um, really close group. On and off the field, hang out together a lot. A lot of them live together. Erdman up the middle, untouched, touchdown again. What a great day Erdman has had. That offensive line has created some fantastic holes for him. And once he gets through, he is a load to bring down. Well, Lakeland got exactly what uh, they wanted to stop when Aurora got it with a little over three minutes left and then they had enough time to just take it into the end zone. There you saw that Erdman's touchdown again. He's had two scores this quarter. Boy, uh, if you're Aurora, Mike, where do you begin at halftime? <laughs> well, try to keep it respectable, I think. His kicking kind of reminds me of my short game in golf. <laughs> well, that extra point is no good again, but with 116 remaining until halftime, Lakeland on top, 31 to nothing. Who is the only first team All-American in Lakeland history? I would say it's uh, Pat Kern. I gotta put my money on Pat Kern. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Ogiego, you got that no wrong, kidding. Andy. Get it right. <laughs> I want to check the media guide right here. Check the media guide. No, we don't believe you. I think that Jeff Ogiego went to San Diego State. He wasn't even here at Lakeland. <laughs> but that's just a wild guess. I'm trying to remember if I... Yeah, he was after me in high school, I think. No. Remember. He was... Whoa, nice kick by Billy Hughes into the end zone. And... Aurora will have to take it at the 20. You don't see that very often, kickoffs out of the end zone. I know the All-American list is on the website. I don't know. I don't think it, maybe it's in the media guide, so well, I guess we'll have to. Andy's, Andy knows how to work a computer, he so, he, uh, he does. <laughs> so he might be right. That's when they had, uh, well, when Kern played, I think Tim Seifert from Sheboygan North was in the backfield, and uh, Paul Mackey from Kohler was yep. the quarterback. Some great teams back then. John Tomey he was a coach. Was a head coach. John is still around. Comes to a number of Lakeland games. Comes to a number of area football games in general. Moose Wilson was AD, an assistant coach. Assistant football, huh? Assistant football. Wow, we. Now that I didn't know. I yep. thought he was just basketball. No. Well, he I could don't do know it all. How much he assisted, Pat Gurn was honorable mention and second okay. team All American all right. in the late right. 60s. Okay, Andy. Okay, okay, we believe you. <laughs> Should know better than to argue with a guy who uh, knows how to work a computer. Has, has, has thoroughly researched the <laughs> North <laughs> South. Football. Yeah. 
Well, Mike Murphy was the pulling guard on. Five yard penalty, still a second. 70. They might be uh, best served to uh, take a kneel down, well, <laughs> as, you as wonder, silly as I, it sounds. I, seriously, I, you know, Lakeland with the, their, all their, well, I think they took one timeout. So they've got enough timeouts to do some damage here. I'll tell you, that's one of the few times, this particular play was one of the few times I didn't notice Lakeland Blitz. They just played it straight up. Paro on the carry. You know, and then if you're the Aurora, Runner, you kind of want to, you almost want to stay in bounds. Well, they start the clock, it's at under 10. Five. And that's going to do it. We're at halftime where Lakeland College has just played dominating football on both sides of the ball to the tune of a 31 to nothing lead over Aurora University. The time is coming. There's no escape from the day you retire. And will you be ready financially? Are you ready, dear? You still can be with investments like an IRA or a retirement plan at work. It's never too late. But start now, because if you wait... You're making a grave mistake. You may wind up working forever. Saving for your financial future doesn't have to be a nightmare. Choose to save. One breakthrough machine gave us insight into the bones, as another did for the heart, and another for the brain. Now doctors are using a new machine to practice medicine and save lives. The difference is, it's one you can use too. When you log on to MedlinePlus.gov from the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, you're tapping into the largest, most comprehensive medical website in the world. MedlinePlus.gov, the website doctors prescribe. Wisconsin, lives. That we're back at Lakeland College, where the Muskies lead at 31 to nothing. Uh, Dave, uh, the stats kind of reflect what's on the scoreboard. It's all Lakeland. Yeah, I really do. 353 total yards for the Muskies. You know, and that's against a team. Let me check their stats here real quick. You know, that's against the top scoring defense in the league. Uh, in total defense, the Spartans are third in the league. They only allow an average of 308 yards a game. Lakeland already 353. 168 of those on the ground on 29 carries, 185 through the air. Ryan Mayeri, Lakeland's quarterback, 9 of 12 for 185 and two touchdowns. MacArthur White, four catches for 124 and two scores. Eric Royal with two catches for 18 yards. Rushing Brandon Erdman, eight carries for 72 with a pair of scores. Sean Lee, 10 carries, 48 yards, and myeri has got nine carries for 41. On the other side, Aurora, 27 total yards, Mike. The, uh, the guys were saying if you factored in the uh, penalty yardage, they'd had negative yardage. <laughs> So it's uh, been a long first half One of those for the Spartans. Travis Perrow, nine carries, 25 yards rushing, so he's got the bulk of them. Yeah. Blazer on the return, and uh, not much. Before we get too far into the second half, I want to mention the crew. Uh, Brian Andrews on the field camera. Jackie Kramer's up on top. Uh, Kerry Coulter spinning the dials. He's the head guy in the truck. Andy McKillop is assisting him. Andy sometimes thinks he's the head guy, but uh, yeah. he's not. I'm Mike Martin, and alongside me, there's a good shot of Jackie. Good job up there, Jackie. She's got a sore finger, I think, from playing volleyball, either that or talking back to the coach. <laughs> but uh, anyway, alongside me is Dave Gallianetti. And in making a stop, David Benton again for the sack. Of the rerun of the first half. Absolutely nothing going for, for Aurora. 
Lakeland's defensive line really penetrating uh, and, and just shutting Aurora down. And a chance to see uh, Benton, you know, he had his pads and everything off. Uh, apparently maybe some discomfort with uh, a dislocated shoulder that he had suffered earlier in the season. You know, he doesn't look like a real big guy. Yeah, he's uh, only goes 210 according to the program. But I tell you, incredibly athletic and, and David really. Paro looked like he had a little bit of running room, gets it up to the 20. David worked extremely hard this past off season, lifting, took advantage of the new fitness center that we built here on campus and uh, separated his shoulder in the season opener. And everybody at Lakeland kind of held their collective breaths because he's such a key to our defensive line. But aside from that, you just don't want to see a good kid like David who's worked that hard get his season cut short by an injury, missed a couple games, was able to get back by the start of the conference season and has paid really big dividends for the Muskies all season long. Got two tackles for loss. The second? Yeah, second. second half, and he's got uh, a pair of sacks, because he had one at the half, and he just picked up one, so. Well, the penalty on Aurora moves the ball back even farther. Uh, it's gonna remain second down. Ball spotted at the six yard line. Horning back, oh! Almost picked by a couple of different muskies there. Number Tyrese Warner. Had a shot, and I think number 99, Josh LaBelle, sophomore defensive lineman, if he had, had a little more hops, could have maybe picked that thing as well. I get another flag on the play. 97. Encroachment on the defense, number 97. Five yards from the previous spot, still second down. Call made by our head official, John Blum. Andy pulled up some uh, national stats for Lakeland. They rank number 26 when it comes to total offense out of 228 teams. That's pretty doggone good. And number 16 in total defense. In on the stop was Ryan Vandaloo and a fumble. Lakeland recovers it. Boy, oh boy. Making the recovery was uh, Shane Shrimp. Worst case scenario for Aurora right there. Vandaloo has been tormenting the backfield the whole game. Pops the ball loose and all of a sudden Shane Shrimp, as we talked about, missed last season uh, with an injury and has been another uh, great player on that defensive line who is just really, really dominating that line of scrimmage today. First and goal on the five yard line. Split out wide left is uh, Rodney Ellison. Hand off to uh, number 37, Aaron Berry. He gets it inside the five near the goal line. Aaron Short. from uh, Boosburg, so their local product. Second down. From the two, pick up a three by Barry. I think we're gonna see a lot of different people in the ball game this half. Jervis is the up back. Myeri on a, on a keeper. Looks like he's gonna be just short. Myeri picks up one, that'll make a third and goal from the one. Now you get a good shot of the defense collectively. A lot of smiles on those faces. They've done the job today. They really have. What a worst case scenario for Aurora. <laughs> really? You want to get out and get a, a nice drive to start the second half and not only are you- uh, Get a sack and then a fumble. You turn the ball over late in your territory, or deep in your territory and- You know, nothing went right. They had the sack, they had the penalty, yeah. and then they f lost the fumble. Myeri, Barry's got it. He's into the end zone easily. Off left tackle, another touchdown for Lakeland. I think it's pretty safe that uh, we would have talked to anybody on both sidelines and no one would have ever predicted that this game would have turned out like this. But Lakeland is just completely dominating. They're taking advantage of every Aurora mistake. I don't know if you saw that last replay, David, but the left side of the line just collapsed just the collapsed. defense yep. and then uh, 
Jervis came through and uh, cleaned up a linebacker, a defensive back, and Barry went in untouched. So as much as... Lucchesi is gonna try and pop this one through, and he does. With 12.25 uh, remaining in the third quarter, Lakeland on top, 38 to nothing. As much as Lakeland's defensive line is dominating Aurora's offensive line, that's how much the reverse is happening. Lakeland's offensive line is really dominating the line of scrimmage. Oh. Do you know how many kids are risking their health by eating unhealthy foods, stuffing themselves and not getting any exercise? Oh, thank goodness, you got here just in time. Where's the problem? In there. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Here, try this, the original fast food. Doctors know that our children need a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, high fiber vegetarian foods to help them grow up healthy. Call for a free booklet or visit kidsgethealthy.org. There you get a good look at the scoreboard and uh, Lakeland just dominating play. We expected a much better ball game and a little disappointed that it wasn't closer. Well, but, I don't uh, think we'll the take the win. Are probably disappointed. No. But, uh, you know, they just have to be thrilled with the way they're playing. And, you know, I think another important thing that we haven't really talked about is, you know, obviously the next step for this program is to get into the playoffs. And if things continue to delay the way they're going, they're going to clinch that first ever playoff berth. They're going to get into the playoffs. At that point, you just take. You know, you're, you're going to go on the road, you know that. You just sort of see what happens. But the important thing, I think, for Lakeland was to win that game here today, final home game, senior day. Next week's game's down at Greenville, and Greenville is a team that's beaten some people this year. I don't think you wanted to go down there having to win a game. It would have been, you know, just that much more pressure uh, to put on the team. I was just looking at, uh, at the schedule and, and where this all pans out. They're going to be at Greenville. Uh, next Saturday in a 12 o'clock game actually and Greenville is three and two in conference They're playing uh, Concordia of Illinois today and uh, based on their record can uh, Greenville should have another win they're a decent club and, and would uh, make them four and four on the year and yeah. four and two in conference Greenville's given uh, they gave Concordia of Illinois a good game uh, Concordia of uh, or Concordia, Concordia Wisconsin right I'm sorry and to go down there, that's an overnight trip for Lakeland. Greenville's down by St. Louis. Ooh, that is a long trip. Horning rolling, finds a receiver open right at the 40-yard line. Making the catch was uh, Joe Folliard. Probably the first uh, really good pass completion Aurora's had in almost the whole game, Mike. No, Horning was only two for seven in the first half. So right now I think he's three for eight. I think he just got uh, down there was a flag on the play. Oh, this so is all coming back. Care of that. Really? <laughs> Denied the offense. So Ten yard penalty. Martin. Still first down. It seems like uh, for them right now it's one step forward and about four steps back. Ball is going to be spotted back on the 15 yard line. That's where it is, way back there. Ball was spotted on the 15, it was second and about 25 or 20. Nothing doing on the run right there. Yeah, um, just a couple of yards. It's gonna be second down. Spartans coming in. Rushing offense only sixth in the league. And they're going up against the second best rushing defense in the league. So rushing yards are going to be hard to come by against this defensive line. Give it to the second back through, and he picks up just a couple. Well, I'll tell you, the one Lakeland guy that got really pushed out of there was Nick Hunter, but uh, took two big offensive linemen to do it. Yeah. Nick, pound for pound, uh, one of the stronger kids on the team. I think uh, coaches said he can deadlift uh, about 575, which is hard to believe. 
I know Zach can bench 5'10". Uh, there's some really, really strong kids on this team. Third down and about 15. Vandaloo coming on the blitz. Ball is knocked down. It was 75, Nick Zeck. Zeck. You mentioned him. We haven't called his name a whole lot, but you know he's been a factor in the middle what, of that Zach, line. Uh, Zeck typically gets doubled and has all year long. People know he's out there and they're trying as much as they can to take him out of the play. But of course, when you double somebody, Leave somebody else leave open. Leave either somebody else open or a single, you know, a man on man matchup. And uh, whistle. Uh, I wonder if we're going to get a timeout by Lakeland. And I thought that's why they call it. Yep. The reason they call a timeout is they had too many guys on the field, and rather than take the penalty, they call a timeout, right. which uh, was a good move. So David, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Lakeland basketball, boys and girls. Uh, we mentioned a little bit about the men's team. I know the girls team lost some uh, really good players from last year. They did. Um, you know, the interesting thing I think for the Lakeland women is gonna be there's a number of players back from season ending ACL injuries. Christy Till. Uh, That's right, they lost, what they lose, season. three of them last they year? lost three. Christy Till, a senior, Connie Thousand, who was a sophomore and uh, Jenna Bame, who was a sophomore. They'll all be back this year. And of course, you never know uh, how uh, Any they'll react coming off of injury. And then you'll have, um, it's, it's hard to say both men and women's side how we're gonna be. You know, I think uh, uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of new faces in both programs. And I know they're both hard at it. The women had a scrimmage today and the men have one tomorrow. Christian comes up and makes the catch right at the 40 yard line. You know, he's been back there all day and, and Aurora has punted quite a bit, but that's actually the first ball he's handled, I yeah, think. Yeah, a lot of them I think have been off the side of the foot or kind of those wobbly kicks that as a returner, you just kind of want to stay away from. And, uh, Are there any uh, kids coming in as freshmen that uh, you can think of that are gonna- either team. Either team. I'm trying to remember. Uh, men have a, a kid, Matt Rogers from Rochelle, Illinois, who was a uh, member of the all-star team, state all-star team down in Illinois, played in the bigger school division, uh, who had a great career at Rochelle, uh, who could do some things at the four spot uh, for the men. Uh, think of it is for Lakeland, it's been so busy. Others, oh, Mark Holzman, just went into the Hall of Fame a couple weeks ago. Mark is the principal at Howard's Grove High School and uh, went into the Lakeland Hall of Fame for baseball and basketball, speaking of basketball. Yeah. Mark and his wife, Sean, both Lakeland alums. Wairi back, going deep. He's got White out there. Another good defensive play made Davidson's by Jarrell nice Davidson, number two. Game back there. Tell you, it's been a busy fall uh, for Lakeland. You've got the football team knocking on the door of going to the playoffs. Uh, women's volleyball uh, Thursday wrapped up its fifth straight conference title, and they'll serve. Uh, they'll, oh. they'll be uh, they'll be home. Uh, they'll have home court advantage throughout the conference tournament. Myeri steps up, going deep again to White. Oh, can't make a one-handed grab. Pass goes incomplete. Boy, it looked like that ball hung up there just a little bit, and it was just out of MacArthur's reach. As I look at the flags, it is blowing from south to north, so it, those passes should be helped by the wind. Fourth down. Interesting that they'd go deep right away. Yeah. Uh, Although tried to cash in, obviously saw something in the backfield that they wanted to th cash in. Yeah, that was just a little out of MacArthur. Looked like MacArthur might have pulled up just a little bit too. It looked like the very first play that they ran, that Jervis run, where he only gained one. They had probably eight or nine guys in the box. Oh, punt just trickled into the end zone. 
punt by uh, Josh Schramm. Takes a Lakeland bounce, unfortunately. Of course, that might have been an Aurora bounce. Bounced it's into the end Aurora zone. Bounce, right. Aurora will get it at the 20. We well, were saying it's been a busy fall. Volleyball just wrapped up their fifth straight conference title. And um, Who's the volleyball out. coach? That's uh, Chad Schreiber. Chad is... Uh, we're on camera, Dave. Are we? At least I am. There we go. There's Dave. Good shot, Brian. Best one all day. <laughs> I know about that. <laughs> Chad's a Sheboygan Falls native, our volleyball coach. Horning back, out, picked off. Number 52 for Lakeland is in for Brent a touchdown. Miller, another freshman. Brent Miller, a freshman. Freshman from Menasha. And boy, I'll tell you. Hey, you think about this Lakeland team, right? And you say, boy, you know, David Benton, Nick Zach, Ryan Meyer, kind of senior dominated, but they've got an incredible play out of their freshmen, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And you saw it right there. Stepped into the passing lane, picked it off, and there was nothing but real estate in front of him. Taken right at the 25, so it's a 25 yard interception return for a touchdown. And Musk another Lakeland touchdown. Muskie's number two in the league in turnover margin at a plus six. Aurora came in actually number one in the league at turnover margin, but nothing going right for Aurora today. Chesie's kick is up and good. 45 to nothing now with 9.20 remaining. That's really something. My guess is that uh, the followers of this conference in a few hours when this score gets posted on the web, will look at that and shake their heads and think, boy, I, <laughs> What's going on? I, I did not. There's a website, d3football.com, and if you're a Division Three fan, you know of it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, th those guys do a great job, but it's d3football.com, and they have different, you know, kind of post boards for the various conferences and stuff, and there was a lot of trash talk going back and forth between Lakeland and Aurora fans this week on the on the board and everybody <laughs> expected a close game and I think the players and the coaches would have agreed with that. And, I uh, think if they uh, combine to do 45 it means they only have to do about seven <laughs> each. <laughs> <laughs> you know for Lakeland obviously if this continues then you're looking at closing out the season next week. This win would Clinch the playoff spot, and then uh, that was great of a record as clinch, uh, they would clinch at least a share of the conference title today. Then that'd be two years in a row. If they win next week at Greenville, that gets them the conference championship outright. Then they would get a bye week, actually, and then the playoff game would be on the 19th of November. I was going to say they've got a great record. They'll be uh, seven and two after today. And uh, yet that's not the best record a Lakeland football team has ever had. A number of years ago, Lakeland went 12-0, uh, and 0, I believe. It was, t it was 10, actually, 97. 10 and 0. Huskies went 10-0. and 0. Playoff was system was year. different. Well, that was the first year that Lakeland and the Illini Badger Conference members were in the NCAA, in, in playing as NCAA schools. And what happens is when you make the switch from NAIA to NCAA, there's at least a year or two, and there's some rules that govern it, but there's some year or two where you don't get an automatic berth. You have to wait for that. And since that was uh, the first year that the league was in the NCAA, they didn't have the automatic berth into the playoffs. So the Muskies would have had to have gotten in as an at-large. And that's and what they were hoping for. And they did not at 10 and all. Well, this year it apparently isn't going to matter. Nope. Win today and you're in. And I know there was a lot of disappointment that year when you go undefeated, right. and uh, you know, they had a good team, obviously. The team ran a run and shoot at Mark Novara as their quarterback, and he still holds most of the passing records in school history, and uh, they would play, they used to call it Kentucky, Kentucky fast break offense on the football field. Ooh, what a stick in the middle of the line. Paxson, I believe. No, it wasn't Paxson on the carry. Number nine, I think it was Rodney Ellis. Pardon me, Kevin Ryan. Yeah, right now you've got, uh, looks to be that second team defense is in there. 
you know, at 45 nothing. They're hungry. Third, you just yeah, you're gonna let those kids show what they can do. And Third down. Quick snap on the carry was uh, Dan DeBusher. That's number 33. And uh, how many first downs at their first one of the game? Uh, they had one. One in the first half so or one earlier? Second one. <laughs> wow. That's hard to believe. That really is. Second first down of the game. And at, we're in uh, the middle of the third quarter. Yeah. Wow. Ball spotted on the 36 yard line. The busher again on the carry. <laughs> Second down. <laughs> See, they're not happy when they throw the flag, and they're not happy when they don't. <laughs> Pickup of about two yards on that carry. Makes it second and eight. And Mike, it's a gorgeous day out here, but the only problem with that is the ladybugs think it's a gorgeous day, too. Yeah, really. They're all over me. Unfortunately, they're just bugs. <laughs> Another handoff by Paxson. And I've checked that. Ball carry was to Busher again. And they're getting a little something going here on the ground against this uh, group of Lakeland defenders. So he's got 75 Zach back in there, Vandaloo's back in there. That was one of the longer runs of the day, about a five yarder. Third down. Horning still at quarterback. It's being rushed hard. Vandaloo was held, but no call. Ooh. And the pass back to the middle of the field almost was intended for uh, Ryan, but... Uh, almost picked by Tyrese Warner back there, made a good play on the ball, just caught himself falling backwards. He needed a little more hang time. <laughs> Fourth down. Yeah, and if you're... Aurora, Mike, you know, you keep your starters in. I mean, you know, yeah, you want to break the really, shutout. Really tough situation here. Oh, yeah, obviously, you'd like to get on the board, but uh, you don't really want to get anybody hurt. You got one more game. Your season's going to be over after next week. Christian didn't call a fair catch, and he made it and was tackled immediately by Danny McKinnison. Called his name mostly when he's been returning kickoffs. But anyway, it'll be Lakeland's ball, first and 10. Ball right on the 30-yard line. I think we're going to have a new quarterback. No, they're going to keep Meyer in for oh, a Oh, yeah, there he series. is. Trotting in a little bit late. Brad Wilk is the backup sophomore. I think we'll see him before this game is over. I think Sean Lee is back in the backfield for uh, the Muskies. Saw a lot of action early on. Hey, they had a kid out here uh, last year for sure. That was a, I think he was a freshman running back. Kind of had a straight up running style. Was pretty quick, but he, I don't think he's back here. Marcus this, Denham? Yeah. Had uh, some injury issues this year and is still in school, still with the team and probably, probably will be back next season. At least that's the hope. Uh, so you factor in Sean Lee, Erdman, Resop, you bring a kid like him back. And then there's a young man, Shannon Fitzgerald, who's gotten a lot of action on the JV level, and who I believe got a lot of action last week, had oh, a we pair of rushing touchdowns. Flag flies in late to see what that's all about. It's gonna be a face mask call on Concordia's uh, Jarrell Davidson. But the Muskies are really stacked uh, in the backfield for next season already. Yeah, 
you know, you hate to lose those 16 seniors, but when you look at the number of underclassmen that are making contributions, that's huge. Let's yeah. see, let's see what they call foul. it. Face pass penalty, number two of the defense. Automatic first down, 15 yards from the end of the run. Well, that'll help the drive immensely. Especially some of the skill positions. Lakeland's going to be in great shape as far as returnees go. We have the, some retooling to do at uh, on the two lines. Good shot of Ryan Vandaloo there from Sheboygan Falls. Probably got a good shot to be an All-American candidate this year with some of the numbers that he's put up. He's got to be a happy camper, not just for his career, but for his uh, high school head coach, Dan Yedis, picking up his 200th right. win. Right. Myeri on a keeper, cuts it up. He's tackled near the 50, probably just short of the first down, but he picks up nine yards. Look will have to retool that offensive line a little bit next year. They'll have Ryan Holm back at a tackle. Joe Poole at a guard, a build around them. Both have really nice years this year. Defensive line will lose Zach. David Benton will have Josh LaBelle and Shane Shrimp back. Then they'll have Hornis and Wagner back at the linebackers, and they both have had great freshman years. Wide receivers uh, wide, left and right. Myeri on a fake handoff, keeps it. He's got the first down. Gets it down inside the 40, the 30, he's broken loose. One man to beat, he beats him, he's at the five. Dies for the end zone, touchdown, Lakeland. A great job by Myeri on that last tackle. I think 14 hit him thinking he was just gonna go down and all Ryan really did was absorb the blow. 14 was the one that fell down and Ryan just stood there and shook him off and headed into the end zone. And when, you wrap somebody, you, when, when you tackle somebody, you gotta wrap them up, you can't just hit them. Whoa, a lot of guys faked out there. Nice fake, and then watch on this last tackle attempt. He, he hits him, well, and then you really didn't give him get much of a hand on it. Andy, that's the one I scored in Oshkosh. <laughs> that's just how it happened. <laughs> the guy slid by me, and I got it into the end zone. Do you have any tape to prove that? <laughs> Lucchesi's kick is up and good, and now the score is 52 oh. to nothing. That's hard to believe. Guys, what do you got? Got a 28 year old black male, got three gunshot wounds in the chest. One upper chest, one lower chest, one center. Bleeding a lot. There are two paths a child can take. Sir, try not to move. We have a 28 year old male. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life. <laughs> there we go, the cheerleaders are trying to get that 52 in there. They're in their keep today, boy. Nine divided by 52 would make it about uh, five apiece, yeah. or six, somewhere in there. Lakeland up to 414 total yards of offense. Aurora at 36 yards of total offense. Keepers. Two first downs for Aurora, 19 for the Muskies. What were the odds in Vegas? I don't know. Myeri's now at uh, 9 of 14 passing for 185, and he's got 12 carries for 102 yards, so he's up to 287 total yards. I don't know, there's a weird looking bug in our booth and it's not making me happy. <laughs> so if you don't hear me anymore, it means I left. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're right by the Grether Woods out here. There's a big forest on campus if you haven't been out here. Hey, do they still uh, catch muskies out of the pond? Oh yeah. Check that out, Dennis. <laughs> That's it, hit it over by David. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> oh, you see all kinds of weird things out here. Bugs and otherwise. Well, ladybugs are plentiful. Yep. A couple of years ago, it was the yellow jackets were yes. really bad. We haven't had uh, too much of a trouble with them the last couple of years. 
Hand off the peril, and he gets it up near the 30. It's going to be stopped just short of it. Yeah, I guess it's 52 to nothing, so we're talking about bugs and. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Whatever to fill the time. Well, they're bringing the uh, starting seniors out, I think, and uh, crowd, uh, Lakeland crowd on their feet, give them a standing ovation. Pretty uh, nice to be able to pull them with 3.02 left in the third quarter. Because this one is pretty much in the bag. You got that right. Second down and nine. Peril picked up a yard. Horning still at the controls for the Spartans. Quick release. Now he had to get rid of that quick because he was under pressure. And the pass uh, was a little too high. Applying that pressure was Everett Wood. It's obviously a significant win in this, you know, because they're going to make the playoffs for the first time, but significant for this group of seniors, I think, to get them there. Uh, I don't think this group had doubts after that Whitewater game, but I think they were shell-shocked. I think this group, in talking to the coaching staff, was just putting a little too much pressure on itself, and they had to go back to doing what they do best, which is just playing good football. There's a nice shot of... Nick Hunter, 22, Brian Ader, 78, Nick Zeck, three of the seniors Whoops. that uh, are going to make, uh, help make Lakeland, Lakeland's football program make some history today. Oh, what are they going to call this? David Benton. Horning was under center, David, and uh, he backed out, I think, to change the call or make some adjustment, and Lakeland stepped across the line, and they called the penalty on Aurora. So the brakes just continue going yeah. Lakeland's way. Yeah. Down to 235 and counting in the third quarter. By the way, how are things with you? I know that uh, your communications director and when uh, John Weber left, you also picked up SID. Is that uh, add a lot to your plate? It does, but you know, it's a... Uh... Oh, nice pass down the middle to uh, big number 86, Nate Fincham. First down! And that's uh, by far Aurora's biggest offensive play of the game. It's added something to my plate, but you know, it's been a good time. Of course, you know how much I enjoy sports. You know, I used to be a sports writer at the Sheboygan Press, and. Um, get an opportunity to interact with kids out here more because you get to follow the sports now, teams is your, and be Is your office out. in the new wing? Or no, you my office is over in uh, the main administrative building because the director of communications is really about 80% of my position and the SID is about 20%. And then I have a couple of full-time grad assistants who do a great job. They really do the day-to-day, week-to-week work. And I was going to say, without week. those guys, it'd oh, be pretty it hard happen. to make it. It wouldn't happen. We meet every week and talk about what's going on. And got Mitch Capel running the stats today for football. Chuck Masarolo's over running the stats for soccer today because we got a home soccer game. And uh, But those guys want to go into that for a career. And you start off as a grad assistant, and you kind of cut your teeth and pay your dues and work hard. and Do, do all the grunt work. work. That's right. So, but then I have a big crew of uh, student workers as well. Oh, breaking through is the busher. He's on a loose. He's down to the 20, inside the 15, and he's hit and dropped right near the 10 yard line. Another big play by Aurora. You know, we talked about that long pass play to uh, Fincham. That was a 26 yarder. And then we get a holding call. Oh, <laughs> so that long run by DeBusher is going to come back. Now the only thing left in question here is, is there going to be a shutout or not? And if they keep making mistakes like that, there probably will be. It was a penalty on Aurora, so that uh, long play is going to be negated. Boy. Now this is kind of one of those when it rains, it pours kind of games. And um, In a way, you might as well get it over with this yeah, game. Right. Come back next week. Finish up strong, play hard. You know, it's, even though they've clinched the playoff berth, there's still something on the line for Lakeland. If they win next week, they'll finish the conference season unbeaten and win 
the t conference title outright, which they haven't done since 98. They shared it last year. But for this senior group in particular, it'd be nice for them to win it outright. Second down and about 18. Pass out to the wing area, but uh, not much. You really can't say enough about the job that Jim Zabrowski and his staff have done at turning this program around. They took over a program that that just had issues. Uh, there was, uh, the kids I think had a hard time buying into the system. Uh, there was talent here, uh, but for some reason it just wasn't translating out onto the field. And you know, I think what Jim got them to do was visualize being successful. And once they could visualize it, it started happening on the field. They got, you know, that talent started paying off on the field. I think sometimes too, Dave, when you run a, a program or an offense where you really stress only one facet of offense, which was passing prior to uh, Coach Jim, you know, that makes it tough to recruit right. running backs. Right. You know, and, and, and I think, you know, in, in the game of football, right. running backs are so important, you right. know, to, to get a balance. Well, I know Jim believes in running the ball, and if you can run the ball, you're gonna be successful. The other thing you got was the linemen on both sides to really commit to the weight room and uh, the concept of controlling the line of scrimmage. And if you can control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, you're gonna have success. And there's no better way to prove that than to look at the tape of today's game because Lakeland has completely dominated the line of scrimmage on oh both boy. sides. Got that right. And you get those uh, defensive linemen tying up the offensive linemen, and all of a sudden you get a linebacker blitzing. Boy, he's wide open coming through, and uh, that's where uh, Vandaloo's gotten a lot of his sacks throughout the year, really, not just today. Right. Well, in many ways, you know, the offensive line opens up holes for running backs, but people don't think about it that a lot like that. The defensive lines really open. They all, the, those linebackers are kind of the running backs of the defense. And, they're opening up holes for those linebackers to penetrate and make plays. And Lakeland's done that all year. Erdman back in the game, and that'll be the uh, final play of the third quarter. At the end of three quarters of play, Lakeland on top by a comfortable 52 to nothing score. Is firstgov.gov. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> well, we're obsessed with getting you government information. Make it do the dandy. Make it. What are those? Government surplus cars for auction. You posted those online last time. No, you did. I'm posting them online this time. Just log on or email us and get what you need. Firstgov.gov. <laughs> ready to start fourth quarter action. Well, they let the seniors take the field and uh, then they brought them off. Oh no, my ears, I think they're gonna let them run a play probably or two and then they're gonna let them come off and get some applause. It's second down and about six yards to go. Erdman tripped as he got the ball. I think he could have got a lot more yardage, but uh, he goes down. It's kind of like that Ali's phantom punch of uh, Sonny Liston. Uh, Wilkes now going in for Ryan Mayeri. So Mayeri comes out of the game. I don't think we're going to see him anymore today. Great way for Ryan and his classmates to go out. Wilk, number five, we saw a little bit of him last week. Brad's from Illinois, he's a sophomore. He's kind of the heir apparent at starting quarterback. Knows he's gotta work hard this summer. Brad uh, works for me up in the communications office. Great kid. 
I keep him running around with messages, keep him in shape, yeah. get his legs yeah. ready. Yeah, seniors have really taken to Brad. He's just a likable kid, and he lives with uh, Nick Hunter, his roommates Travis Jervis, oh. Bandaloo. Those guys all live together in the suites, and uh, it's... Uh, Sounds like trouble to me. It, it's uh, it's, <laughs> an, it's an interesting <laughs> crew, the I'll tell you Third that. Down. We did a photo and shoot over there class. for Residence Life, and they had a pretty good time with it. So <laughs> it's, it's a good group of guys, I'll tell you. They know how to have fun. And what's life if you don't know how to have fun? Oops. Boy, a lot of, <laughs> wow, a lot of movement. <laughs> One, two, three, four different Lakeland Musky guys took off early. Three yeah. of them wide receivers, and one was a tackle. Well, this is the part of the game where the officials have got to be thinking, whew. Werner's had a nice game. Yeah, Tyree. Had a great year as a junior. He'll be back next year as a senior. Just so many <coughs> players uh, Lakeland fans to look forward to coming back next year. Uh, this is certainly a group that has a strong senior class, but will have some tremendous athletes to build around for next year. And it looks like they'll be coming back, uh, having had a taste of the playoffs, which yep. is always nice. That is really nice. Third and 16, a little screen pass by Wilk is complete to uh, Christian. Short of the first down. Fourth down. A rare punt by the Muskies. Yeah, pick up about nine yards on the play. Blazer is back deep for the Spartans to receive this punt. Billy Hughes doing the kicking, taken right at the 40. That was not Blazer, that was Kevin Ryan. I think now it's going to be a parade of new names on both sides of the ball. I'll trade you. I'll do color. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why you get the big, that's why you get the bigger paycheck. <laughs> the big bucks. Mm -hmm. And the notoriety that goes along with it. What notoriety? What is that anyway? Huh? Notoriety. Yeah. By the way, the construction over at uh, Jefferson is going along really well. That's good. I know uh, school board is uh, pretty interested in that. And fumble, ball is loose. Lakeland comes up with it. Well, the good Dan DeBusher, you know, had it and then kind of stumbled down and lost the ball as he was falling. The good news about all that construction with the Sheboygan schools, two good things. One, it's on time, and two, it's in budget. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two most important issues. Yeah, look like, uh, hard to tell. There's a big pack in there. Knock the ball loose. Ball is going to be spotted inside the 50, so we'll call it the 49. I, I go to these every other week. They have a meeting regarding construction and, you know, what they've accomplished and what they're looking to do within the next two weeks. And uh, one thing they say each meeting is... Uh, 27th of March, we got to be have it done so they can move in. On the carry was uh, Paul Resop, number 35. Pick up of maybe one yard. Now is Lakeland done? With uh, any significant construction projects for a while? I well, know they just for a got while. the gym just, done. Just got the uh, wear center addition done, which added a new gym, new uh, fitness center. And we just got done with North Hall, which is the college's ninth residence hall, 96 bed facility. And we filled that this year. Those were part of a $15 million campaign that the college called a legacy for Lakeland a couple years ago. We kind of gutted and redid the interior of the science uh, the science building. And um, neat thing about that is we've got some undergraduate science students who are doing some really neat research uh, with organisms here on campus. They were able to present some of that research down at Marquette 
What are this you doing summer. it on ladybugs? <laughs> <laughs> There's enough of them. <laughs> Wilk rolling, being pressured. He got around the corner. Now he throws, but it's going to be well short of uh, any re in intended receiver. We have, a D, we have a DNA sequencer, and they've been able to actually do some work with DNA oh boy. on campus, which uh, for those students... That sounds like it's way beyond my uh, oh, capacity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The DNA you and I know is did not arrive, and that's about it. <laughs> I wanted to give a little credit to uh, running back Shannon Fitzgerald. He had a carry a little earlier in the drive and mentioned his name. It's going to be fourth down. And uh, Billy Hughes in to do the kicking. I think Shannon had a couple scores last week, if I'm not mistaken, when you guys were out. And he's had, I know, a big, couple big games on the junior varsity level, so he'll be fighting for varsity playing time next season. Hughes's punt is not very good, pretty wobbly, and then it takes an Aurora bounce, and it's finally downed at about the 38-yard line. So I don't even know if that was about a 10- or 11-yard punt. First and 10 Aurora, we're, we have 11-12 remaining in the game. Lakeland on top, 52 to nothing. And uh, they've just been dominating action. Matter of fact, it's been so dominating, we're having trouble finding things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we have a new quarterback in for Aurora. We nope. do. Is it still? Uh, oh, no. yeah, you're right. Drew Sterkel. Freshman quarterback, so Spartans realize that this is an opportunity for them as well to get some playing time for the underclassmen and start looking ahead to next year. They'll finish up their season next week, and they will be done. It's Jermaine James, just in that shot, Jermaine's a Senior, one of two seniors on this year's men's basketball team, Jermaine from Indiana. Brother Dominic James is the much heralded freshman point guard at Marquette. We'll be taking Travis Diener's spot. Travis Diener off to the pros. They, oh, mix up in the backfield, and uh, Sterkel is sacked. Looking to hand it off, and the back wasn't there. Sense a little bit of panic in his feet. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> freshman quarterback saying, "Hey, can somebody take this ball? Because <laughs> right now I don't really want it." That makes a third down, third and about seven or eight yards to go. Ball spotted on the 41. Couple of wide receivers in front of us. It'd be the left side for Aurora. Sterkel rolling, looking, throwing. Pass is intercepted. That was number 52. Ooh, I think that's his sec Miller. second interception of the wow. game. Nice game for Brent Miller today, just a freshman. Second interception of the game for Lakeland. Again, just a matter of watching the quarterback read the route, threw it a little short, threw it a lot short. <laughs> I was just thinking the exact same thing. The only difference with this one is Miller didn't Here's get much Brent. of a return. Nice shot of Brent, nice game. First and 10 ball on the 45. Wilk pulls it out, now pitches it out to Fitzgerald, and he's, there's a scrum on the field. Who's got it? Aurora. A late pitch by Wilk. Fitzgerald had it for a second, then dropped it when he made his cut. And Lakeland loses it. You're going to see it. Late pitch, but a good one. And then Fitzgerald started to tuck it in, and he lost it. Boy, now you just want to, I think if you're both teams, you don't want to go out playing real wanna, crummy. Uh, you just want to get the clock down as quick as you can and get the heck out of here. Lakeland, you want to start the celebration, and Aurora, you want to <laughs> get on, get the, on bus, the bus Gus. and get the heck out of here. Sterkel hands it off to a DeBusher. He goes right up the middle. 
down to the 45. First and 10, Aurora. One of only a few first downs. I don't think they have five yet. hard to imagine how the Lakeland defense could have dominated this game statistically more than it has. Uh, you know, when I look at that uh, Dan DeBusher, is that how you'd pronounce yeah, it? Yeah, that's how I would. It's, it's probably a little bit different, but it sounds pretty comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Dave DeBusher. Nice shot of Nick Hunter, senior who will be playing his final home game. Ball on the 39-yard line, six-yard pickup by DeBusher. He's had a pretty nice game in the second yeah, half. Yeah, he really has. Oh, he's hitting the backfield that time and yeah. sacked. So you can get the number of that defender Number 50 for Lakeland, that's uh, Stephen Johnson. Stephen Johnson. Another freshman. Third down loss of about three on the play. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of been the story of the game for Aurora. You know, we said it before about one step forward and three or four steps backward. They just can't. They cannot get any forward momentum going. No. You know, really football is pretty simple. You just want to move the ball down the field. And Chip away at them. They have not been able to do that. That pass is going to be way over the head of the intended receiver, Danny McKinnison. Fourth down and eight. McKinson. Mike Christian back again. Take this punt from uh, Guthrie. Yeah, good spiral on that kick. And it rolls into the end zone. You know, I think the field is tilted to the north. Anything that bounces <laughs> heads north. Anything that uh, bounces going to the south still heads north. I feel like well, now you just want to sustain a drive run some clock and get ready for the overnight trip next week down to Greenville. And then, uh, as I said, there'll be a week off. Most conferences, <laughs> most conferences will uh, finish up actually that week that's Lakeland is off. The state schools finish up that week and then the playoffs open actually on the 13th. Now they would have to play because state schools are in the same division. No, actually, the state schools. I mean, if they would are, advance far enough. Well, they're in the West Division, and, and Lakeland's in the North Division, and you know how they do that exactly. I haven't looked that much into it, but I think there's a good chance that Lakeland won't play a UW school, and I know that might not make a lot of sense, but um, they're just in different divisions. The the NCAA splits them up into four divisions geographically, and the State schools actually are in the West Division. But and they could just because of numbers. Right. But eventually, oh, well, McKenzie broke loose through the line of scrimmage and he's finally knocked down in Aurora territory. But Shannon Fitzgerald, I mean, had a great run right up the middle. He's had some great runs the last couple of weeks. There you're going to see it makes a good cut there. And then it's just open field. But anyway, the th Sunday the 13th, actually the playoff field gets announced live on ESPN News. And uh, Lakeland will see its name up there, find out where they play and who and all that good stuff. Yeah, really. That was a 29-yard gain by Fitzgerald. And then Wilk on a keeper gets it up over the, th over the 45 down near the 40. If you're Lakeland, just keep the ball on the ground. 
Run out the clock. Run off the clock. Down to 550. Ball on the 42. It's second down and about three. Clock is down to a 535. First back through is number 24, Brent Woodruff, and he picks up the first down. Yeah, we said it before, I think the, the rest of the league is gonna see this score this afternoon and think, Whoa. oh my goodness, what the heck happened there? Now you mentioned about those different regions that they place the teams in, you know, as they move through the tournament or the playoffs, they could eventually play each other down the road. I believe so, and I, I, yeah, they, you know, to see how that tournament bracket shakes out but you know usually they seed the different regions and then there are some at large spots in there and you know if you're Lakeland right now you don't get too worried about that stuff you just <laughs> be thankful that you're in you're, yeah you know it starts with getting in um, the basketball team did it a couple of years ago finally got over the hump got in had a couple of disappointing losses in Lake Michigan Conference Tournament championship games that could have got him in, and then they finally got over the hump. I think last year was a little disappointing for Lakeland. They lost the tiebreaker. Oh, Wilk broke through, faked the, faked the dive to the fullback and kept it off the right tackle, right end, and uh, he showed good quickness yep. on that run, Dave. Little shades of Ryan Myeri there. First and 10, Lakeland. Clock stops as they reset the uh, the ball. It's at the 25. That was a 12-yard pickup by Wilk. We're having a different build than Myeri. Myeri's kind of more of a Steve McNair type quarterback build who can a little more meat on the bones. Pull you over and uh, Brad with more of a traditional build for a quarterback. Fitzgerald was going to take it off to the left and then cut it back to the middle of the field and picked up a good chunky yardage. Him about six yards on the play. Ball spotted just inside the like 20. Injury timeout. Oh, maybe not. Oh, Coach Zabrowski's birthday today? Boy. There you see. That's about as good of a present as they could have gotten him. Really? Third season for Jim, and I'll tell you, he's done an outstanding job. He was uh, offensive coordinator at Milliken down in Decatur. Before that, served a grad assistant spot at Southern Illinois down in Carbondale. And has just, uh, he and his staff have instilled a different kind of feeling into this program. And obviously, it's a good football team, but on and off the court, these kids carry themselves uh, in a positive manner, they're gentlemen, uh, you know, and if you can say those kinds of things in addition to being talented athletes, that's kind of what it's all about. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a good thing you mentioned that because I just watched the movie last night, uh, Coach Carter, <laughs> and you know, that's the exact same thing that yep. he tried to instill yep. in those uh, uh, city kids. Yeah, you know the idea of it. It's not just basketball. It's uh, well, you know, how you two, carry yourself. Two and that programs kind of thing. that they do. Um, Fitzgerald barrels over people. He's down inside the ten near the six. Another first down for Lakeland. Jim's worked with uh, the Sheboygan Area School District, and they have a reading uh, reading partners program. We have yeah, a bunch of those football players that go into the elementary. They went over. They were over the Jefferson last year. And they read to the kids, and uh, and they matched up with uh, big brothers and big sisters of Sheboygan County and uh, football players serve as lunch buddies and uh, with some of the kids and uh, so between those two things there's a community service component of uh, of the program as well which is fantastic. Fitzgerald right up the middle touchdown Lakeland Shannon Fitzgerald goes eight yards for another score, and Lakeland has uh, got it up to uh, 58. You got a couple of uh, the seniors here on the sidelines. I think they're plotting. They've kind of got their eye on the all-sport <laughs> containers. 
Somebody's going to gonna get wet. Out which, somebody is about to get, I think Jim's going to get a birthday bath here pretty quick. <laughs> now, the thing of it is you can't do it too soon because then the head coach just gets mad because <laughs> they celebrate <laughs> too soon. thing is you got to have this set up, you know, a couple of the players go and talk to yep. him, you know, yep. get his attention yep. off of it, and then the other ones. <laughs> they got one bath this year down at Concordia. The kick was good, but uh, there were penalty flags. So we'll have to wait and see what they come up with. Penalty was on Lakeland. Well, this will give... Uh, Lachesi had a chance to uh, kick a little longer. A little extra practice. Yeah. Although, is, uh, this, is that him out there? Or is this a different guy? It is. Is that 84 or 94? That's 94. Okay, Lucchesi. All right, here we go. Ball's gone. Whoop. I think somebody got a hand on it. Oh, here comes the Dawson. Oh, Van Zek have got the. They got him. They got him. <laughs> nice shot, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Big hug from Travis Jervis. <laughs> Let's get a replay of that, Kerry. That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's a happy group right there. With uh, 2.14 remaining, there you see it, Lakeland on top, 58 to nothing. Now when this group started oh, camp back in August, that was the goal, uh, was to get to this point, get the playoff berth. Uh, they got a little water for Coach Creek, defensive coordinator. Oh, they got him pretty good, too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, the goal was to, to get to the playoffs this year. There was no question. There, there it is. is. <laughs> That's Coach Z. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, they achieved that goal, and I think it started at Concordia yeah, when they Cameron. got the win down there on their homecoming. And that was a huge win, right it there. It really was. That was kind of the monkey off the back for the program win. And you know the way they won it spoke volumes. Yep. You know, being down, down 14 and nothing, and then you shut them down, stay in the game, keep your head up, and and you win the game. And then, you know, it's the first time they beat uh, Concordia in five years. I know we had a game out here. I think it was two years ago. And they played Concordia, and they just got, Lakeland just got hammered. Concordia had a good team, and they just ran the ball up and down the field, and uh, Lakeland just didn't have the uh, physical strength to uh, stop them. Yeah. That's uh, probably one of the biggest changes, I think, that you talked about it a little bit, too, uh, is the fact that uh, um, Lakeland, with the running game, um, when Jim came in here, he stressed, uh, Lakin used to stress the passing game. Jim came in, stressed the running game, controlling the line of scrimmage, getting stronger on the offensive and defensive lines, making a commitment in the weight room. And on some level, it sounds pretty basic, but it wins football games. And, and well, football is a strength and speed game, and if you got stronger guys, right. it's gonna make a big difference. The busher makes a good cutback move. He's got big yardage. He's going to be wrestled down inside the 35-yard line, but uh, another big pickup by Aurora. You know, now as a defense, you want to hunker up that pride and don't want to go see them get in the end zone. 33-yard pickup for number 33. Well, they're not done with the water on the sidelines yet. They want to get... They want to get Coach Kinsella, the offense. Oh, they're holding him down. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it went on the grass, yeah. but they had a great time trying. <laughs> DeBusher again on the carry, picks up positive yardage. Carry, I think we need one more camera <laughs> and do a split screen. There's more action right now on the sidelines, I think, than on the field. Nice shot of Coach Zabrowski. With his assistants, Corey Roberson, plays some uh, pro ball on the arena level. Right up the middle, 
Not much there for Aurora. Third down, third down at about four. Lakeland on top, under a minute, 42 seconds and rolling. DeBuscher breaking tacklers, he gets it down to the 20. It'll be interesting to see if Aurora uses some timeout to uh, try and get a score before the end of the ball game. Clock is stopped at 31 till they reset the uh, down yeah, markers. My guess is they're just gonna probably let the clock run. It's a good opportunity for them to try to to do a uh, you know some two-minute drill stuff. At this point, you just want to get out of here. <laughs> really. Clock is running down to 15. Deep pass and incomplete. I think even if that ball would have been caught, the receiver would have been out of the yep. end zone. The intended receiver was uh, Danny Mackinson. Good old friend there. <laughs> yeah, really. Boy, the, even the ladybugs are getting in on the air. Hey, it's first fly I've seen all day. Yeah. They're up badly outnumbered. Eight seconds left. Drew Sterkel uh, getting some instructions from the sideline, trots back into the huddle. Aurora has two wide receivers off to the right. Should be the last play of the game, barring a penalty. Sterkel back, looking, 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 under pressure. He's gonna get sacked and thrown down by Mike Nerritt. Fitting and way to finish the game with a quarterback sack for a defense that completely dominated the game today. We're gonna step out for a minute. When we come back, we'll have some uh, statistics for you and some closing comments from uh, Dave and myself, and then we'll wrap this ball game up. Remember when it first hit me. Applied energy in a forward direction equals human locomotion. What does this all mean, Doc? Well, it changed what is we doing? I thought, wow, this concept might actually change the way we get from point A to point B. I felt like Einstein inventing the telephone. <clears throat> I give you the human foot. Get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. I could reach the spot. Back at Lakeland College in there, you see it was a 58 to nothing whitewash of Aurora University of Illinois. Uh, Lakeland dominated action. They rushed for 312 yards and 52 carries, had 194 yards passing a 10 of 16 from the quarterbacks for a total of 506 yards. Aurora on the flip side had only 116 yards of total offense, Dave. It was a total domination on both sides of the ball by the Muskies. I'll tell you, most of those came late. Uh, the yardage by... Uh, Aurora only had 18 total yards with nine minutes to play in the third quarter. So uh, most of those came... Actually, they only had, looking here, 36 total yards with two minutes to go in the third quarter. So they gained the bulk of those in that last quarter when the second and third string kids were in. So the quarterback for... Lakeland, Myeri finished 9 of 14 in the game, 185 through the air with a couple of touchdowns on the ground. He was the leading rusher, 12 carries, 102 for a pair of touchdowns. So Myeri finishes the day with 287 total yards and accounts for four touchdowns. And 
that's kind of been the story offensively all year long is, is that Ryan does what he wants to uh, because he's able to. Other teams defensively just have so much trouble with him. Brandon Urban, freshman, 10 carries, 76 yards and two scores. Sean, Shannon Fitzgerald, nine carries for 56, and Sean Lee, 12 carries for 43 yards. Fitzgerald with a TD. Receiving Eric Royal had, uh, or MacArthur White, I'm sorry, four catches for 124. And he had the 60 yarder. Two big yarder. TDs early that really set the tone for this ball game. Had a 33 yarder in the first quarter, and then that 60 yarder in the second quarter. Exactly. And that, uh, that did set the tone for the game. And that's going to just about do it for us. This is our final football broadcast of the season. First of all, before I sign off here, I want to congratulate uh, Lakeland for uh, making the playoffs. We won't be following them throughout the playoffs, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do. They'll be, uh, be able to follow that in the paper. A great job by the crew. Brian Andrews on the field camera. Jackie Kramer up on top. Kerry Kautzer spinning the dials, assisted by Andy McKillop. Uh, my partner today, Dave Gallianetti, great job, Dave. Thanks, uh, really offer a lot uh, to the broadcast with your knowledge of the players and the system out here. Uh, my name is Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned to TV8. Uh, football, or pardon me, football is done, but basketball will be starting up, and uh, plans are in the works as we speak, uh, getting a foot, uh, basketball coaches show together, and uh, we'll have that on, and then, of course, we'll have a number of high school games and uh, college games out here at Lakeland and UW Sheboygan that we'll be broadcasting. So keep tuned to TV8 for that. That'll do it for us out here at Lakeland College. Again, it was Lakeland 58, Aurora, Illinois, nothing. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Step aside, please. No way. Not you. I don't think so. No. The United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here.